Daisha Nix chose to play for the G League Ignite over attending UCLA, but did his decision pay off? This is Florence Ceiling. Let's break him down. Daisha Nix was a 5-star point guard in high school when he chose to attend UCLA. But after receiving interest from the G League, Nix decommitted from the Bruins and opted to join the Ignite team as preparation for the NBA draft. The Alaska native served as the G League Ignite's floor general at 6 foot 5 and 225 pounds. Nix was part of the team that made it to the G League playoffs, but did not do enough to live up to his initial reputation as one of the best point guards in this year's NBA draft. Let's start with Nix's playmaking, since that's what the G League Ignite required from him most of the time. When he was on the floor, Nix was usually the team's main ball handler, in spite of playing with other veteran guards like Jarrett Jack or Bobby Brown. There, he showed some savvy in pick and roll situations. Nix proved himself capable of being able to understand and use ball screens. He did not allow himself to get rushed in these types of situations, and generally speaking, found his target whenever he ran pick and rolls. Nix averaged 9.5 assists per 48 minutes, assisting nearly twice as much as he turned the ball over. This assist to Jalen Green is a good example, as Nix collapses the defense and finds the open corner 3. Outside of traditional pick and rolls, Nix also displayed some nuance with his passing. In particular, I liked his ability to find bigs under the basket, and he actually got pretty creative on some of these passes. Not all of them ended up in assists, but I think Nix had a solid understanding of what he was supposed to do on the floor. The Ignite team had many score first players, but Nix was comfortable not looking for his own shot and instead looking to facilitate whenever possible. I think the team appreciated playing with someone like that. Nix also showed nice touch on some of the lob passes he threw over the course of the season. He made the most of the personnel around him, aware that a lot of his teammates excelled at playing above the rim. Another thing that Nix did well was generate good looks from 3 for the G League Ignite. Although Nix himself is not a perimeter shooter as I'll explain later, he still manufactured 3 point opportunities for his team. Some of these reads are pretty advanced and creative, with Nix having to hang in the air or contort his body before sending the pass to its final destination. For instance, this pass out to Jarrett Jack requires Nix to double clutch and then toss the ball across his body at full speed through a tiny window. If Nix continues to make progress on these harder passes, then it should help offset his poor 3 point shooting, at least to some extent. Another area that Nix's passing came alive in was in transition. I think that Nix was really benefited by the breakneck pace of the NBA G League, and that this is something he maybe would not have shown as much in college at UCLA. When Nix was on the floor, the pace the G League Ignite played at was faster than any team in the NBA, even more than the Washington Wizards who lead the NBA in that category. It's safe to say that the same applies for NCAA teams. Nix can be counted on to throw at least one impressive outlet pass per game. These are the types of passes that get your team from one end of the floor to the other in an instant, and Nix is quite good at these. He generally has great touch and accuracy. But despite the fact that Nix can be a pretty good passer, he still has work to do in this department. For starters, he turns the ball over far too much. Nix turned the ball over more than 5 times per 48 minutes. In the NBA, only the best of the best playmakers are afforded that luxury, and Nix would not get that privilege right off the bat. On top of that, Nix had a turnover percentage of almost 24%. That means that he turned the ball over on nearly one-fourth of his possessions, which is not what you want from your floor general. Nix had more assists than turnovers, but the rate at which he lost the ball is alarmingly high. These are fixable problems, but something I am more concerned about is that Nix cannot make tough passes on a regular basis. I highlighted earlier how he is capable of executing difficult reads, but just because he can do that, it does not mean that he is doing it at a consistent level. In particular, I think that Nix really struggles when he's trying to make a pass to the opposite end of the floor. In these scenarios, it seems to me like Nix either telegraphs his passes too much, or does not get the right weight on the ball. That leads to his pass getting deflected out of bounds, being picked off, or resulting in the opponent getting a fast break opportunity. 
In terms of scoring, the best part of Nix's game is his drives. At a lofty 225 pounds, Nix is bigger and stronger than most of the guards he will face at any level, let alone the G League. Because of this, Nix has the capacity to play through contact or actually create it himself in order to get separation. On Nix's best takes to the rim, the Alaska point guard will dislodge his defender with a bump and give himself plenty of room to finish comfortably. Nix is not a top tier athlete and still has plenty of room to grow in that area, but he can get downhill once he builds up ahead of steam. His first step is a little deceptive. After Nix gets past you, he's tough to stop or get around given his size. The best option is to deny him the chance to even get to the basket to start with. Nix has also had some success creating contact and then hanging in the air before going into a little push shot. Due to his physicality, it sometimes does not matter that Nix is facing longer defenders. However, Nix's driving game is a little one-dimensional. Like I said, he can still improve as an athlete by a considerable amount. If Nix is unable to force his way into a position where he is right at the basket, then he has serious issues finishing over people. Nix is exclusively a below-the-rim player who is unlikely to give you any highlight dunks or plays. Right now, his driving depends entirely on physicality. That can only take Nix so far, particularly when he steps up to the NBA level and the amount of physicality, intensity, and athleticism only goes up. Nix would do well to develop an in-between game for the situations where he cannot bully his way to the basket. If he has a reliable floater or short pull-up, then he would not need to absorb so much contact every time. Nix could get into this shot off the drives we have seen, or, going back to how comfortable he is in the pick and roll, he could leverage his danger as a passer into either of those shots. In the short term, Nix needs to give himself the biggest chance possible of scoring on his drives. Almost 73% of the shots he takes are two-pointers. I also think that Nix would be well served refining his handle a little bit more. For reasons that I will get into shortly, Nix can only play on the ball right now. However, there are times where he has not dealt with ball pressure as well as one would hope. For example, Ty Jerome is picking him up full court here and hounding him relentlessly. Nix loses his handle a couple of times, and it's not like he's dealing with a great defender. He eventually gets the pass he wants, but it is a little worrying. As for his outside shot, Nix is essentially a non-shooter right now for all intents and purposes. Nix really struggled pulling up from downtown during his season with the G League Ignite. This was not particularly a surprise, since shooting the ball has never been a strong suit for him, but Nix shot a measly 18% from 3 in the G League. I don't need to tell you how poor that is. The form on Nix's 3s pretty much looks different every single time. He will have to improve his shot in a big way if he hopes to stick around as a point guard in the NBA. No point guards that get playing time in the league have those types of numbers from the perimeter. And, for those who might be inclined to say something, yes, technically, that includes Ben Simmons. Nix's struggles from beyond the arc also apply in spot-up situations. It's not like he exclusively finds it difficult to pull up from deep off the dribble. If Nix cannot get his 3 to a respectable percentage, then that will close up the rest of his game in terms of driving and probably passing. Defensively, I hate to say it, but the reading on Nix is not good at all. In fact, he's probably the worst defender I have evaluated on floor and ceiling so far. Nix is practically a hologram on this end of the floor. He lets attackers go past him like it's nothing. Nix never gets low in a stance, does not take advantage of his physicality, and generally just gets very few stops. Just watch him here against OKC. Nix gets back into play after an initial screen, but then the attacker blows past him, Nix does not try to recover, and it ends in a bucket. Nix's level of activity on the defensive end is largely atrocious. He is not nimble or flexible at all, and at 225 pounds, there are only two NBA players around or below his height that weigh that much. One is Jarrell Brantley, who barely plays for the Utah Jazz, and the other is PJ Tucker. Neither of them play the one or defend point guards. It is likely that Nix will need to get in better shape if he is to stand a chance on defense in the NBA. His added weight helps him offensively at times, but maybe it is just a case of striking the right balance where he is still a big guard on offense but can also really move around on D if he has to. 
Even when Nyx quote unquote gets stops on D, he isn't really doing much. This usually just happens when the attacker tries to get physical and bounces off his large frame. Nyx is still just as undisciplined. It's true that Nyx got a steal per game, but that does not always indicate good defense. In regards to the question that I posed at the very start of the video, about whether or not it was worth it for Daisha Nyx to play for the G League Ignite instead of going to UCLA, well, right now I think it would be a little bit opportunistic of me to try to answer that, given how well things are going for UCLA in the NCAA tournament, and given the fact that Nyx's draft stock has fallen since the start of the season. What I will say for sure is that Nyx still has many things that he has to improve on if he hopes to stick around in the NBA. The biggest thing for me is his outside shot, his three-pointer. Sure, there are some concerns about Nyx's athleticism, about his weight, but all of that can be fixed in a relative amount of time, in a relatively short amount of time I should say, under NBA strength and conditioning programs. What will take a longer time to come around is his shot. Because right now, like I said in the video, there are no point guards in the NBA who can shoot 18% from 3 and expect to get game time. In addition, I think that Nyx just has too many questions in his game right now to be anything but a second round pick. What I mean by that is that sure, I'm impressed by his passing to some extent. I think his passing in transition is great and he can do some stuff in the pick and roll. But there are questions that Nyx has to answer in regards to how difficult the reads that he can make and execute actually are. Because from what I saw in the G League, I was concerned by that. Also, his defense is just terrible. And really, I don't say that exaggerating at all or trying to make it, you know, blow it out of proportion. I really think that Nyx has leaps and bounds that he has to progress on defense before he can be anywhere near an NBA floor. Just imagine Nyx guarding Steph Curry or Nyx guarding Damian Lillard or Nyx guarding pretty much any starter level NBA point guard. He would get torched just as he did in the NBA G League. As always, thanks for watching the video and if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a comment, make sure to leave a like and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Take care and I'll see you guys next time.